Yo, this is Adam from As Everything Unfolds, and you're listening to Rob from Front Row Live. I just recently discovered you guys through YouTube, and I don't know where I've been, but <laughs> but Wallow was definitely my first introduction to the band. So talk to me a little bit about everything uh, as everything unfolds, and pretty much that creative process between the six of you in this project? Um, it's kind of a, a lot of different things. John and I tend to lay down a lot of the structure and get some nasty stuff going where we kind of feel like the track wants to go, where the riffs want to go. And Charlie would put some vocals on and we kind of get a feel for how how they all kind of mesh together. Do the elements need to come out? Do they come in? Do we need to make it crazier or or whatever? And then we still, everyone sort of has a little listen and thinks, okay, cool. This is what we think about this. This is what we don't think about that. Things like uh, Grayscale. The very end of Grayscale it didn't exist until like right the last minute. And George, uh, bassist, he was like, it needs to get heavier. And we put it in and we're like, this is sick. So <laughs> stuff like that just happens, man. Sometimes everything falls into place. Sometimes somebody goes, it's got to get nastier. And then we make it nastier. <laughs> <laughs> now, one one interesting thing is that, uh, you know, I was looking at your stuff and you guys have been around for some time now. Um, yeah. And I was I was watching uh, the video for um, Sleep Alone, which was, I think, 2017, <laughs> 2016. Yeah. So but, you know, even listening to that track, like it's still such a solid piece of material today. Oh, thanks, man. Um, something that I feel like it's hard to make timeless music. And I feel like that's what you guys are doing with your music. So. Talk to me about a little bit about that evolution from something like Sleep Alone to now that you guys are getting ready to drop that debut album. I think the biggest thing is is maybe the maturity. I think beforehand it was kind of just, ah, we'll, we'll do whatever. Oh, that sounds cool. Like, yeah, cool. We'll, we'll, <laughs> we'll do that. There's some stuff on Collide. There's, there's just like a mess. But it's like the, the foundation basis, like sounds, stuff like the Astro Project that you probably can't even that might be on Bandcamp or something somewhere, but like the the atmosphere of that track, you can hear it now. We don't play the same kind of way, but you can you can kind of hear the elements of that in there, and you can hear the elements of Sleep Alone. Everything's just kind of developed a bit more mature, a bit more precise. But as far as like you personally with guitar, and then you watching uh, Charlie with her vocals and her stage show, because her live show even on Sleep Alone was incredible. Um, oh, yeah. So, you know, as you kind of see yourself evolving and you see her as a, as a front woman evolving, what mm -hmm. what is the biggest evolution that you see out of the two? Maybe just the unity of everything, I think. I think beforehand it was sometimes it wouldn't, it wouldn't work or sometimes it, there wasn't that connection between both the music and the vocals. I think now we've got it way more, way more down. But also, I mean, she's come a, a, a most incredible way as a screamer. As a singer, she was amazing anyway, but as a screamer, when we first met, she didn't do none, no scream. It's unbelievable in like three years that she's just, from nothing to wallow, it's like, <laughs> you know? I mean, we'll see where she goes from there. Maybe it'll be even more, like the whole track is just screaming and it's, and everyone goes, <laughs> <laughs> how did the screaming happen though what what kick-started her wanting to learn to scream or wanting to to do something like wallow i think like i think this the songs kind of just lent themselves more towards that we never mm -hmm. we never were like oh we should do screaming this section it was always just like, oh that's so sick and she's like oh i want to try this and then we're like well that's sick we need more of that um and i think it just kind of snowballed because it used to be just like little sections you know a breakdown you put one in and then it was like, okay well how can we how can we go all in how can we evolve this concept and go okay well let's just the whole thing really excuse me release the first minute minute and a half it's it's just screams and that's just it <laughs> <laughs> and there's def there's definitely a lot of anger throughout throughout wallow <laughs> so do you feel oh, yeah do do you feel like the songwriting has a lot to do with whether or not, or not necessarily the songwriting, but but the topic that you're talking about, uh, do you think that necessarily has a lot to do whether these screams come in or out of, of the tracks? I think so. I think so. I think it, it, the subject material definitely kind of plays into what's going to happen, how it's going to mm -hmm. make out. 
Um, maybe the song's not feeling it. Maybe the maybe there's a heavy section that does, but the song doesn't really. It's not asking that about you. Do you know what I mean? It's not asking for for the screams. It's it's asking for almost like a light of that nice vocal to kind of like lead you through everything instead of just being like balls to the wall. Here is here is everything. Here's full full throttle. As uh, the new single Grace Girls out now, like. Talk to me about this track in particular, and this is the fifth release from this upcoming debut album. Yeah. So, what was different on on this track? And um, as you kind of mentioned earlier, that before Charlie didn't scream, she 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 was a great singer. But that's one thing that I kind of I've noticed about the band that you guys have such a great diversity throughout your music and throughout every yeah. song. Um, so, what makes Grayscale different, um, and what kickstarted the writing process for Grayscale? I mean, it's more of a ballad. You know, we hadn't really done anything in this kind of more chill, more like kind of bring all the elements back a bit more, which is why originally I didn't want the heavy bit at the end. I was like, let's do a song. You know, we have this big chorus and stuff, but we can really bring it back in the verses and like really have this quite chill, quite nice kind of sound, <laughs> as opposed to being like, uh, all the time. It just kind of falls into place that way. I mean, it's, it's quite a... It's quite straightforward in its ways of being like, you know, here's the chill, here's, here's your aggression and stuff. But Do you um, feel like this song naturally wrote itself? Um, like it, it oh, just yeah. needed to come out? Oh yeah. But it's, it's funny how that happens as well. Sometimes it just does it. Like, you know, some, some stuff we work on and it happens instantly. There's some stuff, everything that's been a single has been one that, that basically wrote itself, which yeah. has been really, really nice. Yeah. There's some other stuff on the, uh, on the album, I won't spoil which ones, um, but you, they just take, like, they, they just want to sit and write, which, like, ah, we, we love this bit, but this bit's just like, oh, it's not, like, it's not, it's not doing it. I think it's nice when everything falls into place, you know? So did that, did, did that help you guys kind of choose, pick and choose which singles to release as, or which songs to release as singles and which to keep as, as, you know, part of the record? Or did you guys already have that in mind in the during the recording process of the album? You definitely have some in mind. Um, we knew when we wrote "Hiding for Myself," we knew it. We we're like, "That's a single." Straight away, it, it's a single. Like we, we can't. It kind of bridged the gap from what we did before to the new stuff. And we're like, "Okay, we have to use it." Um, I'm trying to think of the other ones. Take me there. We knew that was a single straight away. What are we weren't sure about? You know, there's another heavy one. Again, I'm not going to, like when the album comes out, you hear it and you go, oh, that's the one he was talking about. Like, you'll know it. But like, it was, I feel like there was lots of things that being like, do we want this flavor or do we want that flavor? Some of them kind of covered in pairs and stuff. But also, like we asked Long Branch, our label, we're like, hey, we've got these ideas for ones. What ones do you think? For the most part, we were both like, yeah, we all agree. And it was nice to see where, oh, you thought that kind of popped out a bit more. We thought that popped out a bit more. Actually, we quite like that you think that one would go in. And it was kind of, I almost felt like it was a team effort of them going, these, we think that this is the best broad spectrum of everything that you do, filling in the gaps of where we couldn't, you know, where we couldn't pinpoint what we, want, what we wanted. I feel like it's a, it's a team effort uh, to write the lyrics as well. Is that is that safe to say? Does the whole band as a whole write the lyrics together or is it one member individually? How does that work yeah. for the band? That's, that's, that's Charlie. That's her on the paper. You know, maybe there'll be some bits and pieces where we go, oh, okay, we're not feeling this, we're not feeling that, but you know, it's, she's, excuse me, she's got her vision, let her do the vision, you know, in the same way sometimes with music and stuff, you just have to go, if I get something and I'm like, this is how it wants to be, and it goes cool, like we, we get that, we appreciate it. We don't like this little bit, maybe you'll chop and change. But it's, it's mostly, I'd love to sit here and be like, yeah, I wrote that chorus, but <laughs> I can't even say that. <laughs> but as you guys are, as you guys were in the studio, or as you guys were getting ready to, to write and record this record, where was it obvious to know where Charlie was going with this album or did it take some time to record it and listen to the album before you guys basically found the identity of the record? I feel like that kind of came in halfway. I think we got, you know, the first half of the song, we think we got about five and down and then it starts to take shape of going, okay, this is, this is feeling a little bit more, uh, 
homogenous in this kind of way. These these tracks are sitting in this nice way. Let's take this direction and then go from there. And then the concept art and the concept of the whole album kind of all came together. But it wasn't like a premeditated bang. Before we even write the music, we go, this is what we want to do. It was kind of like, as it, it all kind of like, like you're changing pages on a book, like you know, put a couple of pages, went, oh, okay, that makes sense to do this bit now. Oh, okay, this is like, that's obviously where it was going to go. But we didn't know it was going to go there until we got to that part, if, if that makes sense. For you personally, what do you feel was the biggest challenge as as a guitarist um, in making uh, Within Each Lies the Other, the, the album as a whole? Wallow. The riff, man. Oh, it's just... <laughs> It's a pain to play, man. Like, it's a much easier on a, when we play six and seven, and that particular riff, like, you play it on the seven and A, but you don't use the high E string, and it just gets in the way sometimes. You have to really, like, make sure you're not, like, jabbing it and stuff. That was a, that was a real bitch, especially we called it, oh, that wasn't fun at all. Why did you guys feel now was a great time for this debut album? Um, you guys have, again, you guys have been, um, creating music for, for some time now, but why why did you feel, or what let you know that you guys were ready for this debut? I feel like when you know, you know, I think you get to a certain point, like we've been, you know, we've been touring, we've been releasing music, you know, we've been doing stuff. And then you kind of get to the point where you go, okay, we can't just do another EP now. We have to get to the next level and say, okay, we're, doing, we're gonna do an album now. And I think it was a good time. I feel like the fans felt like it was a good time for the album. I feel like I'm hoping that new fans are, are listening and thinking, okay, this is this was the right call to make, you know, going to the next level. Um, I feel like maybe having the label behind us, having our manager behind us, having some new music that we felt was beginning to be at the next level, I think that all kind of came together at the right time. Um, but if you do it early, it's not, um, it's not the end of the world, you know. What can you, just, you just got to keep doing it, man. I think that's the, that's the secret. Are you think of people like Architects, what are they on, eight, nine now? Just keep going, man. Like, it felt good for us. It felt right for us. We'll never know how it could have been. Maybe we should have done it before. Maybe we should have waited, you know. But I think, I, I think it feels good. Debut album Within Each Lies the Other drops March 26, which is almost around the corner. This year is already flying by. So once, <laughs> what, one, what are you most excited about this record once it drops? And two, what would you want your audience or the new fans to get out of this album? I'm excited for um, one, of the, one of the tracks. It's, it's my favorite track. It's, uh, it's called On the Inside. It's not soon, soon. Um, I just, I just, I just think it's just so, it's just so catchy, so bouncy. There's a nice riff. It's kind of heavy. It's kind of. Mm. It's my favorite one, and I, it's one of those ones where you just have a riff for ages that just kind of feels really good. And then when it manages to come together, like, and I think a lot of people like it as well. I feel like we're trying to take a particular emotion and try and put a positive spin on it, you know. Hey man, like we we've been there, like we we, we get it, like life life sometimes, you know. But um, sometimes music makes things easier, it makes things better, it makes you get over stuff. I mean, I'm sure we've all got those one tracks you've listened to on repeat for hours and hours and hours, and like it just hits in that certain way. Maybe one of these tracks is is going to be that track that's gonna that's gonna that's gonna help you. Like some of them help me, maybe they help you. Maybe other tracks will help you. I don't, I don't know, but especially in like time like everything's depressing can't do anything especially in, in the uk like <laughs> so like if you can have something that you go okay this is gonna get me through that would be nice that'd be nice and that means a lot if if, if, if some fans would say hey man your music really that helps me out yeah thanks man i'm glad i could help you you know help me and i can help you and it's just a it's a cycle you know